As far as I know, badminton has been played in this actual hall for at least 50 years. It was partly um, joined with the club at the school. And then when I came over 30 years ago, I came to an adult ed education class here run by Sally Mellish, who lives up the road. Uh, and, and I kind of stayed ever since. I ran adult education courses, basic badminton, so that people could enjoy themselves, adults. Yeah. And this was one of the halls that I did it in. We'd moved into the valley in 1965. And the first thing I remember was coming to the church hall with Richard to join the small group playing badminton under the directorship, really, of Colin Solway from Chewstoke. It was a lovely club, uh, very progressive, mm. and uh, an awful lot of the... brought a lot of juniors in, brought a lot of people in that would uh, not necessarily have been that sporty, but really enjoyed it. And this was our introduction to the valley. So the church hall is very important to the beginning of our social life here. The hall was built specifically with badminton in mind, at least that was the hearsay, that the then vicar, who I think was called Charles Brown, had it done to the correct dimensions. Undoubtedly, the vicar must have been a player because everything is the right size. There's plenty of height, not too much in the way of beams. The hall was built at a cost of £4,215, 5 shillings and 3 pence. On June the 2nd, 1923, the foundation stone was dedicated by the Archdeacon of Bath with the Reverend Brown and other clergy in attendance. Now showing its age, it was laid by Mrs Richardson, who generously donated a total of £1,600 to the project. Using local stone, the hall was completed in December 1923. At the time, it was the biggest and best designed hall in the valley. When we had the flooding here a few years ago, we couldn't play here for a year and we tried other clubs and Norton Mallory walked because one of our members lives there and it was it's awful. <laughs> no disrespect to Norton Mallory Wall, but it's half the size and you've got half the height of this hall. So this hall's excellent. We also played matches here and elsewhere in the league, in other halls. And we did play in the funniest halls, didn't we? And other oh, we places. We played in weird halls where, where, where the baseline was two feet up the, the back wall. Yeah. Uh, Another one where there was a boiler uh, in the corner. <laughs> actually on court. Actually on court. So if you hit the boiler, you had to, to play it out <laughs> and so forth. The Reverend Brown also made sure the hall had a stage, which has been very well used over the years. First time I've ever been in this hall, well we've been here 36 years, I can't recall, it must have been a village event, probably a harvest supper or something like that. Certainly the first time I came in as a user as such was when I got involved with the, um, the drama production in 1992. So I ended up being stage manager for the production and also appearing on the stage in a very small role. I was in the, uh, the sort of chorus in the group scenes and the dancing. That seemed to go so well that we decided we'd try and carry on and do a regular annual production. And also we then got into doing entertainment for the Harvest Supper as well. So um, during the 90s we pretty much had uh, two productions every year. The Harvest Suppers were really good fun. Always took place around sort of back end of September. Always a sit down meal. We moved to Chumagna in 1978. I remember we had long trestle tables all nicely laid out. 
and we got some of the younger girls and boys in the village and they would come and serve the food. We had local cider, which always went down well. Apple pies, homemade from different people in the village. That was sort of 45 minutes, an hour long show, which was normally a series of sketches and with various themes to them. Normally written in haste in the summer and then performed with not a lot of rehearsals. We did Thunderbirds. We did Bill and Ben. Yes, Riverdance was quite an amazing performance. We tried to replicate what Michael Flatley and co were doing. The river dance was fun. All this Irish dancing. And people managed to keep going. We tried to choreograph the steps and realised that that was going to be impossible. So we decided the best thing was people did what they want on the sort of lower half of the body that kept the top half and their heads as still as possible. We got into a coordinated finish. And we went off stage, and I, if I remember rightly, we had a standing ovation, and there was a suggestion that we do, maybe do an encore, but we also knackered, we said no way. <laughs> that was probably the polite version, actually. <laughs> we first moved to the village in 1979. And so I've been aware of the hall for quite some time and, you know, what it offers the village. It's a really good facility in my view and I've been interested in trying to retain that. I've played in the band at the Cat shows over many years, probably about 20 years now. This corner here, that is where I normally uh, stand or sit with my guitar and try to encourage the actors and actresses we decided we needed a name. So it was um, Jew Amateur Theatrical Society, which sounds very formal when considering that all of our shows are light-hearted, panto-style or, or humorous shows. They've all spent a lot of time rehearsing it and trying to remember their lines, which is not always successful. Oh, my vibrations told me to use that entrance, and I always trust my vibrations. But when the memory right. fails, and the performance really, how do they get out of that? Thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've forgotten what I got to say. <laughs> I say, I say, what a lot of people got to say. My friend was doing the curtains, so Sue was really pleased to do that. She didn't want to be on stage, and lots of people at the back doing things. And Meryl Leach especially, who's now left the village, but she was wonderful. She was always on the lookout and could see things and could alter things and make things up. She was wonderful. Queen of a prop, she was. My favourite characters, God, that's difficult because I've done so many and I've enjoyed so many for different reasons. Um, I did enjoy playing Dracula, which I've done twice now. He died, Dracula. You wanted to see me again, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah. I shall have blood! <laughs> it's for you, Inspector. Ah. That'll be for me. <laughs> Who is it? It's the Deputy Chief Constable. Uh, uh, are you sure you wanted me? Uh, did he mention my name? Inspector Pratt. It's a bit like a, uh, an Inspector Cluzo type character. Well, his exact words were, Is the idiot who's in charge of the investigation still there? It is for you, sir. Another one was uh, Great Balls of Fire, about the Great Fire of London, set in 1666. And the costumes in that were just fantastic. Come here now, give us a couple. <laughs> this is what you need, Chief, eh? What? Yeah. I want to light the old fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. We bought our house in Chew Magna in 1995, and we understood that there was a, a small group of actors, and we ended up joining that group. <laughs> So we started singing Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. <laughs> uh, 
and a screen was sort of in front. And it was me left on stage in, in a swimsuit. And then we had another show where there was us in pink tutus prancing across the stage and making a fool of ourselves. The biggest problem we had was keeping a straight face. I'm very proud to say I've been in every show since 1992, so yeah, so love it. I've actually performed with Vox and Frocks, um, a local choir in here, and that's that's been great. But also, I did some choreography for um, the, the Cats, the amateur dramatic group, and actually they wrote me into doing it. And I probably would have done more, just in, just a lack of time. But I am a bit of an exhibitionist, and I really enjoyed the whole thing. My name's Juliet. It makes my heart beat faster. Can you hear it beating? <laughs> so scary, <laughs> trying to remember the lines. <laughs> and we get left with a piddling little walk-on rolls. This year I've only got five lines. Last year I was the front end of a camel. It's the face of Minerva, she will be pleased. <laughs> so I'd forgotten about that, I was a goddess. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was a highlight, having my face up there. <laughs> See? It's as light as a feather. Oh. Lynn has used the hall to teach various fitness classes for over 20 years. In the early days, I was already teaching at Winford, but because Chew Magna Hall is so central, people would come from around the Chew Valley into Chew Magna. And it's such a big hall, it meant there's lots of space for the exercises, circuits and stuff like that. And in Zumba, I'd have about 30 or 40 people in there, so which had the space. And because I could use the stage, it meant that they could all see me. So it was perfect for that. Predominantly women, but I did get the odd guy. And I got one guy that came once who was actually deaf, but could still join in with the Zumba because he could feel it. Lots of happy memories with here, yeah, yeah. The Church Hall has been home to many different events and users over the years. They have pantomimes here. I think the Scouts use it, and I think school groups, play groups might use it because there's a school over the road. I suspect they come in. We've been to lots of parties in here, dances, and we've been to a couple of wedding celebrations in here, which is always quite nice, and, and, and baptisms. But the millennium was, um, was probably the biggest. Um, we actually put up uh, marquees, etc., around the outside of the hall to increase the capacity and had all sorts of things going on in there. And in the evening, we had a big party where, well, I'd, I'd hate to think what the number of people in the hall was. We're allowed to have about 100 people in the hall. From around midnight on the millennium, we came in here and I looked around and I thought, 100 people? There's, about, there's nearer 500 people in this hall, let alone 100. VE Day was another classic case where we had um, a big gathering of people. I remember VE Day, people dressed up in khaki of the period. There was a camouflage net over here so it looked really authentic. It was a real village event. This is such a good space for things like that. Summer fair time. The hall was used, and round the back, I remember Annie Stewart running the broken china stall, really? where you could, yes, you could throw things and break more china. Oh gosh. The kids loved chucking tennis balls at crockery and breaking them, and that was great excitement and there was always a big queue to have a go with that one. This last year, 2023, we actually celebrated Burns Night. That was the rector's initiative, and it was a very successful one. We had a, a three-course dinner, including plenty of haggis, and the wine consumption was quite high, really. Then, in May 2023, the hall was used by the Tube Magnus Society to show the coronation on the big screen. In the autumn, there are plans to revive the tradition of showing cinema films in the hall. 
it is self-funding, self-financing, and ultimately, if the church hall cannot support itself and maintain itself, the village would actually lose the church hall because the diocese is in such a dire financial state that they would sell it and you'd probably find it either demolished or converted into flats. The hall has always been in a perilous financial position and normally at the end of the year there's been some big party or other which has raised funds for the hall and it's enabled it to survive for another 12 months. And so we go from um, year to year on that basis. We have no reserves. Looking at the condition of the hall, I think it is deteriorating and obviously money's tight for uh, renovation. It's old, it doesn't function in lots of ways, uh, lets the water in, it costs too much to keep up. It's in a part of the village which is very liable to flood. In 2012, we had six floods in about four months, three of which came into the hall, and we ended up with about four to five inches of water in the hall over the top of the floor. And we've got an area under the stage which is at a lower level, and that completely filled up. Uh, and sadly, we lost a lot of the, um, the scenery and the bits and pieces that were stored down there. It was so deep and it was so badly affected, but then it, it was repaired and restored with a solid floor. The good thing about this floor that we've got now is that if we ever get a flood, we wash it down, give it another coat of sealant, dry the hall out, and we're up and running in a matter of weeks. Whereas after the 2012 flood, it was 18 months before we got the hall going. I'm very pleased that we've been able to maintain the insurance of the hall because it's not only been flooded but there was a fire here some years ago and uh, the front of the hall was badly damaged. Fire brigade was still here when I got round here at about half past eight in the morning and it was a very close thing. Another 10-15 minutes and we'd have probably lost the whole hall. Having survived floods, fire and Covid the hall is still going strong, and on Wednesday evenings, it's used by Jane Price. Hi Jane, can you tell me what are your sessions? I am a fixed steps instructor, so Explain it's, that. it's doing a, a fitness dance exercise class for adults, which is all to do with the Strictly Come Ballroom. So you can do the cha-cha, the jai, the paso doble, we just have lots of fun, put it all together. Why did you decide to use Chu Magna Church Hall? Um, because of the size, um, it's a nice area to be able to dance in. It's lovely to have all this space. It's nice if I need to get on the stage and do a bit of performing on the stage. I don't very often, I tend to stay down. The best thing about this hall is the flooring, I would say. The drawback is you can't hardly park outside because people decide to park there instead. Although it says, please do not use these facilities. And also, sometimes the heating is a bit of an issue. But we, between us all, we've sorted that out now. One of the problems we do have, a big problem with, is the area out at the front of the hall. The parking which is out the front of the hall, which belongs to the hall, is used a lot in the evening. So we arrive and there are already, the spaces are taken. Parking is a problem, yes. I mean, there's no parking in the village. I mean, it's not just the hall that's uh, suffering. But our problem is that it's putting out people that use the hall. That is our income. And if you don't have any income, it's a big problem. The state of the church hall is pretty dire. The roof has got no insulation in it whatsoever. All the nails on the slates are rotting. It was built 100 years ago, and it's the same as it was then. It hasn't moved forward at all. The kitchen is in a dire state. and We've had to close it because it doesn't comply with any of the food safety regulations. 
there's now an ambitious plan to completely renovate and extend the hall on the side nearest the pub. This is the existing building here, and then we're proposing an extension here with a new entrance there, which would be on the level without having any steps. So coming in through a lobby, on the left, we've got the new bar and reception area. We feel that if we had a bit of a foyer, it would help the heat in the hall. We would also have a new boiler, etc. Uh, there would be a bar that has a serving hatch into the hall, which would be good. The kitchen would have a serving hatch into the hall. Now, the bad news is we're probably going to need somewhere between four and five hundred thousand pounds for that. So it's going to cost a bit of cash, but there are grants available and I just think if we have a whip round in the village we might get a few bob. To help bring in some more users, they are planning to hire out the hall for a brand new game. One of our new ideas is to try pickleball, which is becoming a real thing in America and Australia and uses basically the size of a badminton court. It's suitable for children and adults, and everybody can play together. I hope that people will enjoy the game, and it will help the hall with the revenue that it raises. Okay. My feelings about this hall are actually quite mixed. I've got a lot of affection for it because I seem to spend a lot of my time in here, particularly when we're preparing for shows. Sometimes it can almost feel like a second home. But if I'm brutally honest, I think it would be great to knock it down and start again because there are so many frustrations with it. The windows don't fit properly, the heating is not good, the roof and the, the walls need refurbishment. But we need a lot of money to do it. So the only way we're going to be able to do that is to, to have these plans to expand it and improve it and refurbish it. We've got to try and keep this hall. I'm, I'm, I really like to have the hall for the village it's got uh, facilities that we don't have in any of the other halls. I love this hall. It's not ornate or anything, but it's got a nice homely feel. We're now playing pickleball, which we had a go the other day, which was fun. I'm going to do that again. And it's such a good hall. It's such a lovely space. My feelings towards the hall overall are positive. And I would like it to survive and carry on. But that means it needs to be brought up to date, fit for purpose and used.